It had absolutely no resemblance to any other flying machine that had ever existed. It was impossible to imagine that it would have been able to fly given its appearance. On the other hand, 80 years ago, a brand new type of aircraft that promised to fly faster, higher, and further than anything that had come before it ascended to the skies, in addition, the futuristic inventor who conceived of it believed that flying wings would fundamentally alter the way in which people fly. However, in a relatively short amount of time, these futuristic flying aircraft will no longer be in existence. Every single one of them was either obliterated or dismantled, which leads us to the question what happened to flying wings? Hello and welcome to this episode of High Technology. We are grateful you are here. In this episode, we will talk about the untold story of flying wings. And if you enjoy contents like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to click the notification bell as well so you won't miss amazing videos like this. The United States possessed some of the world's best bombers in 1941. Tough and well armed. However, when carrying bombs, their maximum range was only approximately 3,000 kilometers, which was far from sufficient. Because the Second World War was poised to engulf the United States, Nazi Germany had taken over most of Europe by the spring of 1941. Britain appeared to be the next to follow. Bombers like the B-17 and B-24 wouldn't be able to reach Nazi Germany without access to allied airfields in Europe. As a result, the Americans would need to create a new type of bomber. One that could fly from North America to Europe, strike Nazi targets, and then fly back to its own country. But it would be a difficult engineering task to construct the first intercontinental bomber. According to conventional understanding, the aircraft would need to be extremely large, at least two or three times bigger than current heavy bombers, with enormous wings, several engines, and a considerable fuel supply. Additionally, due to its immense size and relative slowness, it would be a straightforward target. But Jack Northrop, a trailblazing airplane designer, put up a daring solution. Any aircraft's engines, tail surfaces, and fuselage all increase drag and add weight to the structure, lowering the aircraft's performance. What if you could take away all of these components, leaving only the wing? A form that maximizes lift and reduces drag would be the outcome. It would make for a much lighter, quicker, and more effective bomber if you could get it to fly. Northrop's plan wasn't as absurd as it might seem. He demonstrated through the successful flight of prototypes that highly effective flying wing aircraft could maneuver just as well as conventional ones by the year 1940. Northrop promised the Air Force a bomber that would fly higher and nearly a third faster than existing heavy bombers, despite the fact that he wasn't the first to create flying wings, reducing its susceptibility. It would also have the range to travel to Europe while carrying twice as much payload because of the effective all-wing design. The Air Force was so taken with the idea that it gave Northrop and his small group of engineers two years to create the new bomber. Northrop's flying wing would need to travel more than 9,000 kilometers round trip to reach Europe. It needed a mission that would keep it in the air for about 24 hours. The nine members of the bomber's crew and the six members of the relief crew would work in shifts working from the crew cabin, equipment storage, and cockpit located inside the wing's middle part. The engines were completely enclosed inside the wing as well. They were the most potent piston radials ever produced, topping off with 28 cylinders and two turbo superchargers. Each propelled the bomber's counter-rotating propellers, enabling it to accelerate to almost 600 kilometers per hour. But completely redesigning the control surfaces was necessary to make a flying wing stable. Without vertical and horizontal stable Stabilizers, the wing would have to serve as the location for all surfaces. The bomber has an elevon, a completely unique type of control surface, with six underwing bomb bays that could contain up to 10,000 pounds of ordnance and 20 remotely operated machine guns to fend off enemy fighters. Northrop's low drag, high lift flying wing would also be powerful. Northrop's flying wing would outperform any conventional bomber pound for pound. Additionally, the Air Force intended to construct hundreds of them. The world was shocked when the first prototype was revealed in April 1946. No one has ever seen a plane quite like this. The bomber's development had been kept a secret and was known as the XB-35, but it was never included in the war. Although it had been given the go signal to be developed in 1941, tactical difficulties, a lack of engineers during the war, and production constraints slowed down the process. Additionally, since Nazi Germany was unable to conquer Britain, 
American bombing operations from British airfields reduced the requirement for a new intercontinental bomber. The XB-35 was all delayed by these issues. However, the Air Force was still optimistic about the future of Northrop's flying wing and ready to push further with its development. 13 YB-35s in pre-production were already in the works in 1946. Additionally, given how quickly post-war aviation was growing, the Air Force asked that two prototypes be modified into jet-powered variations and renamed YB-49s. The XB-35 powered by a prop flew for the first time in June 1946, while the YB-49 powered by a jet took off a year later. The Air Force was to conduct a detailed evaluation of both aircraft. Many believe that the extraordinary benefits of the flying wings went beyond simply military use as they soared to the sky. Fantastic conceptions of giant flying wing aircraft with roomy lounges and eating areas and private suites first appeared in well-known periodicals. Even Northrop demonstrated how a bomber might be adapted to carry passengers by removing bombing equipment to create room for seats and converting the tail cone, which formerly housed machine guns, into an observation deck. Northrop believed that flying wings would revolutionize aviation transport, allowing travelers to travel more cheaply, faster, and farther, additionally in comfort that a traditional airplane could never hope to match. The flying wing appeared to be the next step in aircraft design in 1947, and yet every one of Northrop's groundbreaking aircraft would be obliterated or disassembled for scrap in a few years. Northrop's flying wings appeared to be the state of the art in 1947, but delays following upon delays forced the 1941 design to undergo testing in the jet era. The piston engines on the X-35 were outdated and so unreliable that almost every test flight was cut short because of overheating problems with the propeller blades, or gearbox failures. Northrop switched from the intricate contra-rotating configuration to a simpler single prop design after just 19 flights, but this led to an acceptable performance degradation. And by 1947, it was obvious that Northrop's best chance lay with the jet-powered YB-49. The aircraft would be faster and more dependable if it were retrofitted with eight jets and given training edge fins for stability. But because jet engines consume more fuel, the bomber's range was reduced to less than half of what it had been intended to be. Other components of the aircraft could never be fully optimized for greater speed flying, necessitating the removal of two bomb bays in order to make room for a additional fuel tanks. Even so, Northrop remained certain that his effective all-wing design would ultimately prevail over even the most modern jet bombers. The first YB-49 was handed to the Air Force for evaluation on June 4, 1948. The delivery was supposed to be a crucial turning point for Northrop. However, it was only the beginning of a far worse story. Five test pilots from the Air Force took off on what was supposed to be a normal test flight a day after the delivery. The crew led by Glenn Edwards was among the best in the Air Force. However, calamity struck only 40 minutes into their flight. Witnesses claimed to have seen the airplane fall from the sky. The crew had unfortunately lost control of the airplane, and it had crashed. Northrop claimed that the pilots had overdriven the plane. However, the Air Force drew attention to enigmatic handling traits and high power stalls. Testing with the surviving YB-49 went on despite the disaster. But other peculiar handling traits were quickly revealed, including a tendency to yaw uncontrollably. It was barely noticeable to the pilots, yet it was enough to make precise bombing all but impossible. To try to solve the issue, Northrop had spent years creating an autopilot. However, the aircraft required more, a technology that could enhance and continuously adjust the pilot's inputs. Such a technology might have been considered wizardry in a time long before computers. The remaining YB-49 nose wheel disintegrated during high-speed taxi tests in March 1950, causing the aircraft to crash and be destroyed. The Air Force had grown disinterested in Northrop's bombers by that time, because the XB-35's planned intercontinental function had already been fulfilled by the B-36 which had already entered service. The medium-range B-47, a brand new jet bomber that is also being assessed, fared significantly better than the YB-49, and the plans for the store B-52 were well underway. Atomic bombs could be carried by these more recent bombers, in contrast to Northrop's flying wings which could only accommodate older, smaller weaponry. The Air Force had also mandated the creation of a strategic reconnaissance aircraft based on the YB-49 as a 
final ditch effort for the flying wing. However, the aircraft was already utterly inadequate and the initiative was quickly abandoned. Amazingly, Northrop's flying wings were in some ways still too advanced for their day while in others they were just too out of date. All remaining flying wing airframes were soon disassembled and sold for scrap. Jack Northrop, who never saw his dream of the flying wing come true, departed his company in 1952. Devastated. Up until 1980 when he had a look into the future, Northrop received permission to view a brand new top secret aircraft in 1980, the year before he went away. It is exactly the same wingspan as his YB-49, this gigantic flying wing. The new bomber's design would enable more effective flight while making it almost invisible to radar. Helped by a computerized flight control system that in 1941, Northrop could only have imagined. Northrop repeatedly said, I now see why God kept me alive all these years, while he was crying. The most cutting edge airplane in existence is the Northrop Grumman B-2 Spirit, a bomber that keeps its activity secret while instilling dread in its enemies. And that wraps up today's video. If you enjoyed it, smash the like button down below and leave your thoughts in the comment section down below. Again, this is High Technology, see you tomorrow.